Welcome to the level 1 quantitative methods summary video series. This video is a summary of the quant reading on statistical concepts and market returns. First, some quick terminology, and we've done this in our regular lectures, a quick recap. When we talk about the population, we are talking about all members of a group. So population mean, means the average of all items in a given population. A parameter describes a characteristic of a population. So parameter goes with population. A sample is a subset of a population and a statistic or sample statistic is based on a sample. Remember these measurement scales, they keep, they keep showing up on exams. So nominal means only the names make sense. So A is not better than B is not necessarily better than C, it's just a grouping. Ordinal means order makes sense. So if you have a, B, and C, you can say A is better than B, which is better than C, but if A is better than B and B is better than C, the degree by which A is better than B doesn't really matter. Interval, here, the degree by which A is better than B makes actually makes sense. So you can say A is better than B by three units and B is better than C by two units. And the most precise measure is a ratio scale where there is an absolute zero. Summarizing data using frequency distribution, this is a fairly straightforward point. If you are given a lot of data and you want to organize it and create a histogram or some other sort of a graphical image, what you typically do is the following. You define your intervals. So here, for example, we have defined an interval of five points, and then you tally the observations and count the observation in each interval. That's what's been done over here. Absolute frequency of 25 means that there are 25 items that fall within this bucket or this interval. 35 fall within this interval. Cumulative means that you are just adding up these numbers. So 60 is 25 plus 30. Relative frequency is in decimal terms or percentage terms. So this 0.25 is simply 25 over the total number of 100. Measures of central tendency, these are the various measures, mean, median, mode. Within mean, you need to understand that there are different kinds of means or averages. Arithmetic mean is the most basic, which I'm sure everybody is aware of. Geometric mean is typically done this way, and we use geometric mean when we are coming up with the average return over several years. We use this when we have time series data. And if you have a return of 10%, then 20%, and minus 5%, you don't just take the geometric mean of 10, 20, minus 5. What you do is 1.1 times 1.2 times 1 minus 0 0.05, which is 0 0.95. And all this is raised to the power of 1 over n. n in this case is 3, the number of items. And then minus 1 to get the actual return. Harmonic mean is calculated this way. And rather than giving you the formula, I'll just show you a very simple example. If you have three numbers, 10, 12, and 15, to do the harmonic mean, you take 3 because you have three numbers divided by the reciprocal of each of these. So that's how you come up with harmonic mean. Generally, if you have different numbers, then the arithmetic mean will be larger than the geometric mean, which will be larger than the harmonic mean. The median is your central number, and the mode is the number that shows up most often. Question? So uh, this is how you, the simplest way of calculating the harmonic mean is this. I think what you're talking about is a holding period return. The only link between harmonic and holding period return is that they both start with H. Other measures of location. So a general term here is quantiles, and then there are different types of quantiles. 
these are the terms that you need to remember. When we say quartiles, then we are dividing our distribution into four parts. Quintiles means dividing into five parts, deciles into ten parts, percentile means you divide into hundred parts. And how do you do this? Let's go with a simple example where you are evaluating the returns of ten different mutual funds. So you organize from 1 to 20 where 1 is the worst return and 20 is the best return. And then if you do quartiles, then the first quartile will be the first 25%, second quartile will be the next 25% and so on. Location, again going with the same data. So. This is your first item, the lowest return going to 20, the highest return. For a given percentile, let's say that percentile is donated with, denoted by Y, and for N data points, in our example we have 20 data points, the location, so if we say the location of the 10th percentile, that 10th percentile is shown here, is given by N plus 1, and what is N? It is the number of observations. N plus 1 into 10. What is this 10? This is the percentile divided by 100. So you get 2.1. Now you might say that out of 20, the 10th percentile should just be 2. But we get 2.1. And the reason is that when you have a small sample size, such as this relatively small sample size, then this formula is just an approximation. The formula becomes more precise as the sample size becomes large. If your sample size is 2000, then this will be more precise. But from an exam perspective, this is the formula that you need to remember. Linear interpolation is used when Ly is a is not a whole number or integer. So if we say sixth decile, then you'll get a location of 7.2. So what do you do? You look at the seventh value and the eighth value, and then go 20%, actually 0.2 would then mean that, and let's just do this with an example. Seventh value is 37, eighth value is 39. Then the sixth decile, which is what we are working with over here, is 34.7, which is 0.2 times the linear distance between the two. And where is this 0.2 coming from? It's the 0.2 from here. Next item is measures of dispersion. How spread out is our data? The most basic measure is range, which is high value minus low value. Another measure is mean absolute deviation. There is a formula for this, but I would prefer that you think of it intuitively based on the definition. So average of the absolute values of deviations from the mean. So you find the mean and then you find all the deviations from the mean. Take the absolute values, which means that minus numbers become plus numbers. And then you find the average of those deviations. And you can do that with these numbers, and you should get a mean absolute deviation of 7.5. Population variance is the mean of the square deviations from the mean. And this is the formula for a population variance, but I want you to use the calculator. And I'll show you how to do this on a calculator. Sample variance is the same formula, but we divide by n minus 1. And this is using the calculator to come up with the variance. So just what I'll do is pause here for a moment and you need to be able to plug in these numbers. So data means you get into data mode and then clear everything. 10 enter is the first item, enter the rest of the data. Then you go into the stat mode and when you go into stat mode, if you don't see this one variable denotion, uh, if you don't see one variable on your screen, then hit second set until you get into one variable mode. Then you, as you hit down arrows, you will see n equals 4, x equals 10. Sx refers to the sample standard deviation. This refers to the population. Obviously, 
the calculator doesn't know whether you are plugging in a population or a sample that you have to figure out based on the question now what if you are asked for the population variance Square. you just take this and square it next item is chebyshev's inequality this states that for any set of observations the proportion of observations within k standard deviations of the mean is at least 1 minus 1 over k squared so what is k it is the number of standard deviations from the mean and an important point is that chebyshev's inequality does not assume anything about the underlying population many other formulas assume that the underlying population is normal but chebyshev does not in accordance with the chebyshev inequality 88.89 percent will lie within how many standard deviations of the mean now you can plug and play over here the two most common items are k equals 2 which means two standard deviations from the mean and k equals 3 so you should almost memorize this what percentage of your data will be within two standard deviations of the mean it will be 1 minus 1 over 2 squared which will give you 0 0.75 so that means 75 percent of your data will be within two standard deviations of the mean and if k is 3 then you have 1 minus 1 over 9 and that gives you this number so this says that 88.89 percent of your data will always be within three standard deviations or the more precise way of saying it is that at least 88.89 percent of your data will be within three standard deviations of the mean can you have 99 percent of the data within three standard deviations of course you can in fact if the distribution is normal then you do have about 99 percent of the data within three standard deviations of the mean can you have 100 percent of the data within three standard deviations of the mean yes you can have a population where all your data is within it is possible it doesn't have to be the case but it is possible Shebyshev is simply saying that at least this much is within so many standard deviations of the mean it's not telling you the upper limit coefficient of variation and sharp ratio both are very important and in a sense they are roughly speaking reciprocals of each other coefficient of variation tells you the risk measured in standard deviation divided by return so it is the risk per unit of return a low number is good because a low number implies low risk per unit of return so if you are comparing investments based on the coefficient of variation you pick the one that is that has a lower coefficient of variation the other is the sharp ratio which tells us the excess return by excess return we mean the return above the risk free rate divided by the risk here again risk is measured as standard deviation symmetry and skewness so this is a symmetric distribution a symmetric distribution has a skewness equal to zero that means you have the same amount of data on the right same amount of data on the left your normal distribution is symmetric so you'll have 50 percent to the left and 50 percent to the right of this central point positively skewed means that you have a fat tail on the right a negative skew means that you have a fat tail to the left a very testable item is that with a positively skewed distribution the mean will be higher than the median which will be higher than the mode so this is the mean and the reason is that these outliers have the largest impact on the mean so always think of the outliers as pulling the mean the most they also pull the median but not as much and they don't really have much of an impact on the mode and then obviously with a negative skew with a with a negative skew we have the opposite the mean is most to the left because again now the outliers are on the left from a risk management perspective what sort of uh, skew will be most dangerous 
obviously this will be the most dangerous because there is a chance of huge negative returns. Skewness tells us how uh, distribution is spread to the left and right of a center. Kurtosis tells us about how high or how fat a given distribution is. So it measures the degree to which a distribution is more or less peaked than a normal distribution. And you don't need to get too hung up with this, just a few basic facts. A normal distribution is mesocurtic, so it has a kurtosis of 3, just remember that. Leptocurtic means that kurtosis is more than 3 and platycurtic is k less than 3. The way you can remember platy is it comes from plateau. So plateau sort of go like that. So less peaked than normal is platycurtic. Meso is sort of the middle ground. So normal is somewhere in the middle. So that is 3. And the one that is other than meso and platy is leptocurtic. Leptocurtic means it is higher than normal. But the scary part is that it's fatter than normal. On the, the tails are fatter. If the tails are fatter, that means they are more risky. With a fat tail, that means the probability of negative returns becomes more. 